what's up everybody this is John from PhoneDog.com and today I'm taking a look at Samsung's Behold 2 for T-Mobile. If you've been near a computer for the past few weeks you probably know about the general reception uh, that Samsung's Cube UI received. It's uh, not too good is it? But uh, the phone does have its strengths and I think they're worth looking at. I want to say thank you to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with the Samsung Behold 2 for review and also to give away later on the One Pod Bandit. Just go to PhoneDog.com and click on the tab that says Win Free Phones and play the uh, little slot machine game there. You get five free spins a day at PhoneDog and five free spins a day on Facebook. It's free, you can't lose anything, and you might get a phone. So why not, right? Also check out Best Buy Mobile because they take care of all of the uh, mail-in rebate hassle right there in the store when you purchase the phone. So you don't have to deal with it, which is great. All right, let's get to it. Ay ay ay! so here we are with Samsung's Behold 2 for T-Mobile. And I, I make that sound pretty bad right from the start, don't I? Um, well, there is a lot to be uh, disappointed with in this phone. Uh, if you're looking at it from the standpoint of somebody who keeps up with Android devices. If you're comparing it with the first Behold, this is a major upgrade. It's got a lot of features that the first one didn't have. My wife had a Behold and she got by with it just fine. Um, she's switched since then. But if you compare this one to the first Behold, it's a huge leap. You've got... Uh, Wi-Fi, I think uh, 500 more milliampere hours on the battery. Um, it's got a really nice camera software. Uh, so from that perspective, I would say, you know, this would make a great phone for my wife or somebody who had a, a, one of the first beholds. Starting looking at the face of the phone, I think the display is very nice. I don't think many people would dispute that. It's a, it's a nice display. Um, unfortunately, below it, you have this panel of what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons plus the D-pad. It's too much. Um, it looks like it's arranged comfortably, but let me tell you, after you use it for a while, you just get sick of all this stuff getting in your way, especially if you're the type of person who likes to work without looking at it too much, which I am. Um, I think the worst of this could be done away with simply by getting rid of this silly cube UI button. It's such a waste. There's no reason to have it there, um, and I'll explain all that when we get into the software here. But you know, if you move that and rearrange some of these buttons, you could have had a a lot more um, intuitive panel here, and a much more efficient use of the real estate at the bottom of the screen there. Next thing I hate this hold button. This thing is so tiny. It's kind of a hassle. I mean. I just think that was a bad idea altogether. A switch would have been nice if they wanted to do a hold button. The volume rocker is fine. It's great to have a three and a half millimeter audio jack, and then you've got this, uh, you know, the micro USB for charging and data transfer. Um, as for the materials, I don't know. I, that's one thing I think I have uh, more complaints about than most other reviewers. I think it would feel much nicer if this phone was metal. Um, the original Behold had a, a metal battery cover. I don't know, I think that would go a long way in making the, the phone feel um, like it's actually worth the 229 on contract T-Mobile is asking. But, uh, you know, one of the great things is that it has 320 megabytes of RAM, and so that's, uh, I believe it's still the most RAM of any Android to date, which is great. So you will notice that in the performance of the phone, however, it's still got the old Qualcomm 528 megahertz processor. Um, I guess I've covered pretty much everything on the outside, so let's dig into the software here. Um, you've got your three desktops here, and you can see the little indicator at the top telling you which one you're on. That's handy. I like how they've been doing that with TouchWiz devices, so you can use widgets, um, have different setups. But this is an Android device, so all of these little TouchWiz kind of features feel like a downgrade to somebody who's been using Android for a while. Somebody who's been using a Behold 1 will probably love it. Uh, if they enjoyed the Behold 1, that is. Uh, you can see in here, a lot of the menus are clearly TouchWiz. Overall, the phone feels more like TouchWiz than it does like Android. And in some situations, they've actually blended features of the two. Uh, had to edit something out there. I was showing somebody's information that I didn't want to. But they, you know, you have your Android drop-down notification bar, which I think is probably one of the uh, more brilliant aspects of the Android UI. And in this case, Samsung actually got it right. I like having these settings up here. I think that's a really smart addition. But for the most part, they really blundered trying to um, squeeze TouchWiz over Android. It doesn't belong here. This cube interface, which you could just avoid, but having this dedicated button, 
you almost feel like you're wasting your money, I would think, if you don't use it. And using this menu at the bottom rotates the cube, or you can spin the cube with your fingers, or you can do it with the D-pad, I think. I was doing it before. Maybe not. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, it's such a novelty that um, I think it would be great if we could send this phone back in time and let somebody from 1992 play with it. Because they would thoroughly enjoy this for hours on end, I'm sure. But for today's uh, smartphone user, it's just a waste. And I've read several reviews that said, you know, if you really want to access those um, applications that the Cube presents to you, if you want to access those on a regular basis, you're going to put shortcuts on your desktop. I mean, who wouldn't? So, you know, it's totally useless. I do kind of like this whole thing with the flipping through the images, I think, and, you know, other media. I think that's kind of cool. Other just strange things, you've got the application dock that pulls out from the side there. I didn't mind that. The camera software is very cool. I'm going to wipe off the screen real quick here. It's got a very bright flash, and this is Samsung's TouchWiz camera software, and it's really nice, actually. One thing that I was not able to do was to take video with the flash on, which I was able to do on the original Behold. So I don't know if I'm just looking in the wrong area, but see the flash option there is grayed out when you're in camcorder mode. When I go back to camera, flash comes back. Let's do a manual. I think that's on. And uh, I'm sure you can see that that flash, this is just going to wash it out, but is very bright. And that's one feature I liked about the original Behold is that you could take video in the dark. Not great video, but it worked. But anyway, I just wanted to point out really quickly here that this software has plenty of options for uh, prosumer uh, photographers who are much more advanced than I am, and I'm not going to be able to... Uh, fully appreciate what I have available in front of me here but I can tell it's a nice camera and I like the pictures that I've taken with it and I will post video and photo samples with my written review. Now here is the messaging interface this is uh, totally TouchWiz not Android at all it's a a modern TouchWiz I'll give it that but um, I think it's kind of I don't know they've done a, added a little bit of unnecessary interface elements that I think slow things down and make them less intuitive and less friendly. Now you can see I've put the HTC Sense keyboard on here. This is not official. You can't go buy this. Um, it's actually, you're not supposed to do that. But uh, I just wanted to show you that you could replace it. Now I want to switch back to the default keyboard so that you can see it. And unfortunately, they've replaced the Android settings <laughs> with these TouchWiz settings, which doesn't make sense. Generally, you're seeing all of the same options available. But things just aren't going to be where you expect them to be if you are an Android user. And uh, I think that was a mistake. Now this keyboard... I, I, I didn't mean to do that. I don't like this keyboard at all. I don't like anything about it. I don't like this home screen. I don't like the cube. Um, I don't like the way that Samsung covered up Android menus and mixed and matched things in this odd hodgepodge between the two UIs. It's like they couldn't decide which elements Google did better than them. Uh, and that's why I say if you're gonna if you have the Samsung Behold 2 or you're going to buy the Samsung Behold 2, replace their user interface. <laughs>